sitting beside Kasparov and <laughs> Karpov. That is insane. That is fantastic. <laughs> well, these two superstars, Jan Nepomniachtchi and Magnus Carlsen, game two now started, and it is Jan Nepomniachtchi with the white pieces, David. That's right. So we do see the Spanish opening, uh, an opening that both of these uh, players are extremely familiar with from a young age. And we do see a variation called the open Spanish, where there has been a trade of pawns in the center at an early stage. Usually in the Spanish opening, it's very blocked, very congested. All the pieces, all the pawns remain on the board. In the open Spanish, however, there tend to be more open lines. So um, very classical stuff at the moment. I would ignore the computer bar. Um, the, the computer will not know as well as these players right now who have rehearsed these types of lines countless times. Um, this type of line is regarded as being slightly better for white. Um, it's very forcing as well. Normally play is well analysed up until move 20, even 30. Um, so it's a memory test at this early stage and normally that's not what what uh, Magnus Carlsen is about. It's not normally what he goes for. Yeah, and this is actually a big favourite of Shakriar Mamajarov, a player that we saw compete in the prelim preliminaries. And uh, yeah, he's the big champion of this variation. And you're right, no gains by Carlsen. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I just have to jump in and say, so <laughs> very different tempo in the two <laughs> semi-finals here. So these two players, the first game lasted for an hour. They now just started their second game, but Anish Giri and Wesley So. They're already in game three. First one ending up with a win for Wesley So. Second one was a draw, and now they're playing their third game. And we do know that Anish Giri needs a win in one of the two last games to tie the first match. Yeah, um, I'm not a huge fan of Wesley So's approach in that last game. Wesley mm -hmm. had white after winning the first game with black, but Wesley, he just went straight for a draw, forced a draw out of the opening and... Um, frustrating for Anish. Yeah, frustrating for Anish, um, but Wesley's banking on the fact he will stay unbeaten in those next two games. Usually, I found from my own experience that the chess god, Kaiser, um, she punishes you if you head for quick draws <laughs> with white. Um, every time I make a quick draw with white, I always get punished in the next game with black. So let's see if Wesley so um, can continue his good form in that next one. Anish Giri trying to fight back. All right. Well, I guess it is with the white pieces. Jan Pomniachi also is sort of looking to surprise Magnus, although this sort of this... was a very solid opening that both players will be very known with. Yeah, um, the last couple of moves, they're not familiar to me, mm -hmm. but maybe they have been seen in the past. Uh, we have seen a queen trade. That's the most important thing. And now white had created a huge threat. If we bring up the analysis board, we can see um, in this position where the queens have disappeared. Black has just brought his knight to the edge of the board with an idea. Black wants to capture this important pawn, this isolated pawn. Um, therefore, Nepomniachtchi created a threat of his own. He brought his bishop forward, um, creating a pin here, hitting this black knight, which is actually hard to defend. Black had to play the very awkward move to retreat his bishop, defending this knight. And now um, there's a bit of choice, but white has to be quick because he's still facing this threat. Knight takes pawn would now actually fork the rook and the bishop. Um, so the first move I was looking at, I'm not sure if it works. The first move I wanted to play was rook takes bishop, eliminating the defender of this knight, forcing the black king out into the, into the open. But maybe there's just no follow up. Um, you can give a check, for example, the black king steps back and you can bring your bishop back, creating this idea again. But black will simply step forward and this would just repeat the position. Um, I'm, I'm trying to see a follow-up for white here. It feels as if black's position is so loose, so shaky with this king out in the open, this knight vulnerable, but mm. maybe there's just no way to take advantage. Mm -hmm. And that's why yeah. Napoleon is having a think now. Yeah. And uh, in the meantime, I do have to show you that Magnus has received a challenge on Twitter from Ooh. John Carlo. He says, a little bit of a different opponent today. Think he can take Magnus? And uh, there he is with his pet rabbit. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest? <laughs> that is very cute. <laughs> and uh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim Shassad says, even the son is scared of world champion, ignoring his focused eyes and is referring back to the first game when the sun just shone and uh, gave him a kind of a super, superstar appearance. Yeah, that's right. Definitely look like it, but it's getting late in Oslo where Magnus is sitting. Yes, so the sun is uh, going yeah. down. And uh, if you'd like to send us your pictures, we absolutely love receiving them. You can use the hashtag tag chess champs and join in the fun, join in the conversation. The more, the merrier. We absolutely love it. Yeah, that picture with the sun in Magnus's eyes. Now in my head, I keep singing that song, The Sun Always Shines on TV. And it's just in my no, head. No, yeah. you, don't, you don't know that song. Huh? Is that by like, Aha, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like, uh. the, I must admit, when I first moved to Norway, 
I only knew one song from Aha, which yeah. was like uh, Take On Me. You know, like every Brit knows that song. Yeah. And uh, somehow I got educated on Aha. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's an interesting man, Morton Harkett. Mm -hmm. And uh, meanwhile, Nepomniachtchi, he is in the tank. He is thinking. Um, from his body language, he's, I mean, to me at least, um, he's hinting at the fact that he has indeed studied this position before from the white side, but he just can't remember what he has studied. And that is psychologically a difficult hurdle to overcome. Um, knowing that you are familiar with the position, but not quite uh, grasping the key ideas or recalling the key ideas, um, at least. And if that's the case, then Nepomniachtchi, he just needs to find a path to just continue the game or, or maybe even go for that repetition of moves that I mentioned a few moments ago. Mm. Um, you can't get to a situation where you're beating yourself up in your mind about not remembering and end up kind of letting that spiral just... out of control. OK, so I, I, Rook takes Bishop is really forcing kind of the game will end in a draw in a matter of moves. But can you play something normal, like, for instance, defend the pawn? Now, I'm not necessarily thinking of moving the bishop because I think the bishop would actually get in the way of the rook. So, I mean, can he just go, I'm going to move my rook two squares forward. Pawn is defended. We Let's play. Um, yeah, so instead of rook takes bishop, which is the most forcing move, um, the other option is to bring your rook up, uh, sides, uh, defend this pawn to the side. And um, the issue here for white is that suddenly the pieces are maybe a bit clumsy. And for example, if black just castles the king um, to this side of the board, the pin is broken, this rook in the corner is no longer um, a target. Suddenly, all of black's pieces coordinate. And how are you going to get your pieces into the game for white? Especially these two guys, they're not partaking in the action. And all of black's pieces um, look pretty good. Um, OK, still pretty much in the balance. But um, for example, if white brings the bishop out, um, I could definitely imagine a scenario where black starts to activate this rook, maybe open things up a bit later on. And I think Magnus Carlsen will be very happy in this type of queenless middle game where he tends to thrive. Um, so as Yvanka mentions, it is possible in this position to bring the rook up, defend this pawn, or step the bishop forward and defend this pawn. But either way, um, it feels like it's losing a bit of momentum mm -hmm. and uh, Magnus would have time to finish his development. So what would you do here, da uh, David? Would you respect your opponent's idea or would you kind of go, OK, fine, the opening didn't work so well for me. I got caught in some preparation. Okay. Uh, well, there's our answer. You okay, can see... Let's check out the players' cameras. Um, will we see a repetition of moves and a draw? The position repeating itself. It looks like they're out of here. Um, Whoa, and it yeah. is a draw. It is a draw. Three-fold repetition, the same position three times on the board. Neither side could actually escape that at the end, and um, a short but tense draw. 